The best definition of the p-value is the exact significance level. It is the lowest significance level at which we can reject the null hypothesis. So I'd like to explain why I think the best definition of the p-value is the exact significance level. And to illustrate that, we'll just assume that we're observing a fund manager, and over the last five years, her, she has outperformed her benchmark, and we're asking a question, a statistical question, is that outperformance due to skill or due to luck? And so our unit of analysis is gonna be monthly returns, and let's say over the last five years, therefore, we have five times 12 or 60 monthly returns. For this fund manager, the sample mean or sample average is plus 15 basis points. So that would be in excess of the benchmark, let's say. We do need the sample standard deviation. So the sample standard deviation estimates what we don't know, which is the true population's standard deviation or volatility. So that sample standard deviation denoted capital S typically, let's say it's 50 basis points. So again, we're observing an average monthly return, excess return of plus 15 basis points with a dispersion in the sample of 50 basis points. We do need the standard error and central limit theorem tells us that the standard error is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. In that case, or under these examples, that is 50 divided by the square root of 60, our sample size, and you can see that is 6.45 is our standard error. So the standard error is a standard deviation. It's just a particular type of standard deviation. It's the standard deviation of the sampling distribution. And so it's going to change with slightly, a little bit on general, with each sample that we take. But never forget that it is itself a standard deviation. And so the last thing we need to conduct a statistical test here of the sample mean, which is the most common type of statistical test, is our null hypothesis or what we're hypothesizing is the true population mean. So in this case, we're, uh, our null hypothesis is that mu is zero. So this is the default assumption when, it's a, when we are testing for statistical significance. And so our null hypothesis here is that mu or the true, popu the true population mean is zero. Then we can get our test statistic here, test or T statistic of 2.32. And that is given by, we take our sample mean, subtract our null hypothesized value. I'll put a little H there. And then that's the numerator. And that's just the dist distance or difference between what we observe and what we're hypothesizing for the null. But it's in raw units. So we standardize this by dividing by the standard deviation, which is the standard error. So in this case, our sample mean is 15. Our null hypothesized true population mean is zero. That's a difference of 15, but we want to divide by the standard error to get to translate this into standard units, and it's 2.32. And so we can see this visually here in the chart where we have what is a normal distribution because this large sample central limit theorem also tells us that this large sample, although it's a student's T distribution, it's approximately approximating a normal. And when the sample is greater than 30, we can use the normal. Okay, so here we have the null hypothesis of zero and then here we have the observed value, the sample mean of 15. I'll put that right like that. And so that's how far away we are from the zero. But the 15, you can see, is really in standard units is 2.32 standard errors. That's how far away our 15 is from the null hypothesized value. And then 
the p-value comes into play because it's giving us the area of the rejection region. Or in this case, where it's a two-sided p-value, which is probably the most common, it's the area in both tails here. And so you can see the p-value in this case is 2.36%, and that's because we have 1.18% over here in this rejection region that I colored in purple, and 1.18% in this rejection region on the other side. They total 2.36%. That's the p-value, which we want, which I, I think the best definition of that is that's the exact significance level. What's that mean? It's the lowest significance level at which we would reject the null hypothesis. And so if we look at some critical values here, the critical T value at 95% is 2. So that's the critical T with these number of degrees of freedom. So it's approximately normal, not quite normal, but this critical value of 2 being less than our test statistic means, we would reject the null at 95%. Put another way, with 95% confidence, this observed 15, which is 2.32 standard errors away from our hypothesized null, that's far enough away that at 95% confidence, we would reject the null hypothesis that the true population mean is zero. In other words, we would say this manager's outcome here is not just due to random luck, but there's skill involved. So the p-value of 2.36, the way that I like to use that is take one minus that, and in that case, we get 100% minus the 2.36 is 97.64. And that's another way to interpret the p-value to say that it's, a, it's an equivalent way. This is the highest confidence level at which we could reject this null. So we were able to reject the null at 95%. But for example, if for these degrees of freedom under the student's T, we wanted 99% confidence, a comparison of our test statistic and the critical value shows that it's less than, and we would fail to reject the null or we would accept the null at 99% confidence. Put another way, yes, this manager is plus 15 basis points, which is pretty far from the hypothesized null, but it's, po it's possible randomly to, to, to get out this far, and at 99% confidence, therefore we can't reject. And so, the, but the p-value is really better than either of these, this, this classic approach of selecting the confidence, because it gives us the exact significance level. It tells us that, I'm gonna erase that, that we could reject with 97.64% confidence because the 2.36% is the total area in the rejection region. And so this spreadsheet, which I'll upload, is dynamic. And you can see, for example, if we were to decrease the sample size to 40, then the standard error increases and the p and the p-value, the two-sided p-value, increases to 6.52%. And we would not be able to reject this null with either 99, much less 99% confidence. On the other hand, if we were to increase the sample size to 70, then the two-sided p-value drops to 1.44%, and we could reject with 98.56% confidence. So I think that's the most helpful way to interpret this p-value as the exact significance level. Once again, at the p-value is giving us the area in the rejection region or regions, and therefore it's giving us the lowest significance level with which we could reject the null. Or if we want, we could take 100% minus the p-value and say, if that's the highest confidence level at which we could reject the null. I hope that's helpful.